This video is about a simple cabinet that I just built to hold all the blades for my table saw. I started out, I had some uh, leftover underlayment plywood from a uh, job I did where I put down some cork flooring. And I also had leftover scrap cork that I was going to use too. I decided to, um, you know, incorporate in this project. So basically I cut out some blanks from the underlayment to use as trays to put my blades on. And then I went over to my little CNC router and started to um, put some slots in them so that I could, uh, you know, have an easy way to push them up out and, um, you know, just to uh, make them a little bit easier to handle. So, you know, basically it's just a matter of programming it up and then watching the router go to work here. And as you can see, I, uh, you know, I'm getting good use out of those rubber band clamps that I made. They seem to be working pretty good for projects like this. So, um, you know, this is just, as I said, just routing out some uh, shapes in the blanks that I made. And I wanted 15 drawers in the end. And so I started out, I'm going to run 16 of them to start out. So the first one basically all cut out there. And you can see just how easy it is to uh, change with this setup. And the clamps have been working out good for me so far. And I just uh, used a extra piece of cork that I had laying around to put on top of my waste board there just to keep from machining any pockets in it while I'm going along. So this, you know, this was kind of a boring job uh, going through and just, you know, watching it and changing out the... Um, these little blanks one after the next until I was able to, uh, you know, get all 16 of them routed out. And, uh, you know, the CNC router really has uh, been a great addition to my shop. It, it doesn't really feel like you're doing woodworking when you're using it, but it really helps out when you're making multiple of an item just, you know, to keep everything the same and make it easy without having to make a lot of templates and, you know, eat a lot of sawdust. So the first thing I did, um, you know, is just run all of these uh, blade holder panels. And, you know, they really don't need to be cut out like this if you, you know, want to make something like it. But uh, it really helps to push the blades up and out without having to contact the uh, teeth on the blades. So, you know, after routing them out, I just took them over and took my little orbital sander to them with some, you know, fine sandpaper just to get the little burrs that the router leaves around the, um, around any of the cutouts and edges. Uh, there's some real, you know, fine splintering and um, there they are. That's kind of what they're going to look like. Um, all right. Then I just took them over to, I have one of the little old orbital oscillating sanders, I guess they call it, spindle sander. And I just use that to get the fuzz off the inside of the all the cutouts. Um, with the router, you have to make multiple passes at you know different depths, and you get some fuzz where they meet. So the easiest way was to just put some fine sandpaper on this uh, little sander and clean them up. And then I just use that little uh, Harbor Freight belt sander. I've been getting good use out of it in my shop to go back and get a little bit of radius and break all the corners on the panels. Then I went back to the router and I programmed up some uh, pads to set the blades on. And I really just wanted to try and see how um, I had scrap cork flooring left over from cork flooring job that I did. I just really wanted to see how good that stuff machines with a, um, you know, a router. And I was really amazed how nice and clean and burr free it uh, came right off the router. So, you know, it, it's really good to, um, you know, machines good. And I just wound up using some double sided tape to mount that to waste board. And that actually, um, you know, held good and it was strong enough for the little pressure that you get for machining this stuff. So I wound up um, drawing up two different plates. I had um, one set here that is a smaller plate that goes underneath the 8-inch dado set parts. 
and you can see the you know it's just kind of i think it's about seven inches diameter so the uh so that the uh, teeth hang over the edge of it then i went back and i made a larger here it is a eight inch size pad and um you know i'm really happy the way this cork machined and i think i'm going to be making um a lot of uh items to put under you know, like plant pots and stuff like that protectors out of it um, machine them out in different shapes and stuff in the future so you know it's just the same thing here just watch the machine do the work and change out the blanks for you know every time you machine one it took a little bit longer here because i used a uh, double-sided tape to hold it down but you know there's all the blanks cut out so i have the two different sizes cut out and you know basically there's just how they're going to work there's a 10 inch one and then there's the data ones i have the one for the um using the same one for both the center cutters and the outer blades and i just wanted to keep the uh, carbide suspended a little bit so next i um i had a piece of uh, tw one by 12 ash that i had um you know, harvested from my backyard and dried and machined. And I was going to make the side plates for that. So I just kind of cut it to the size. And then I went back and I threw the dado cutter in the, um, the table saw. And I started to cut dados for the, um, the little blade trays to slide into. Now, when I, I did this, what I did is I just, um, I clamped kind of to get the spacing. I just, took a uh, strip of wood the spacing I wanted and I just uh, put it in between a board and the fence there that I you know to uh, kind of give me the spacing on each data as I cut them and then I just take and after the cut was done I would just um, you know move the fence up by the thickness of that board and then slip that other little clamped on piece up to the fence so I could start out for the next cut. Now I originally started out making these sides with a, uh, a much larger spacing than what I wound up on the final sides. I, um, I got done with it and it just was too big and I didn't like the way it looked. So I wound up going back and actually making a, uh, another set of sides that I don't have a video of, but I made it with the spacing approximately half of what you see here to get the, um, the overall cabinet size down some so you know it's really easy and that new infinity uh, data set really is amazing how nice it does the good job it does how clean the grooves come out and um burr free everything is so you know i'm really happy with that and that's part of the reason why i'm building this cabinet just so i can keep those blades from uh, being stacked up and banging into each other you know, over time that could really nick the carbide. So here it is, kind of everything roughed out. Um, it's kind of it's where the, the way the shelves will fit into it, and that's how the pads are going to sit under the blades. And now it's I put a couple rabbits in the ends of those sides too, as you can see, to um, accept the top and bottom plate. And for the top and bottom, I just had another piece of rough cut ash from uh, you know my backyard that was drying for a couple of years and I just started by kind of cutting that to length and um, the problem is on these wider boards my my joiner will only go eight inches wide so what I have to do to try to get them flat and cups out of them and stuff is make many passes on my planer um, I just take like one thirty second of an inch off one side and then what I'll do is I'll just take and I'll flip it and take about a 30 second off the other side and i'll just keep um you know taking a real shallow cut and flipping it and you know just keep doing that for a couple of cuts until everything really starts to flatten out over time if you try to take one big cut the rollers put too much down pressure on it and they'll actually take any bow out of the piece while you're cutting it and it'll come back after it comes out the other side but there you can see i got you know i was able to get it real nice flat Cross in both directions so I'm basically happy with that so now I was just going to go back and take it take some little bit heavier cut now and just take it down to the right thickness that I want and um, you know as you can see I have the planer 
hooked up to a uh, Grizzly Dust Connect collector. And um, this has been one great addition to my shop. It's one of the ones that uses a canister, so you really never have to clean a bag. And in front of the planer, I actually put a um, one of those cyclone separators into a garbage can. And that allows me to catch most of the planer chips and change that out easy without filling the bag on the dust collector, which is really more of a pain to, um, you know, empty out. And then I just, you know, I got the board to thickness and flat. So now I'm just going to go back and um, make one edge of it be straight and parallel to those two surfaces that I have parallel now. And that's just, you know, a real easy job on the joiner. Took a couple fine passes. And then the last thing is to go back and cut it to, um, cut it to with. Then after I got this done, I actually had to, you know, cut, cut the parts to length. But um, I also went back and put a small rabbit around them for a back panel to um, be recessed in in the cabinet. So there it is, just cutting the um, the parts to length. And this is dangerous, not using a guard here, because that little scrap can uh, catch the saw blade and go flying back and hit you. So you have to be really careful and never stand in front of the blade. So pretty much there it is, just, you know, temporary clamp together to try everything and see how it's going to work out. And, um, you know, it looks like it's going to work real good for my needs. So the next thing I'm going to do is go back and glue up the cabinet itself and I'm just using some tight bond glue and got one of the little silicone brushes that makes it real easy to spread the glue when you're you know doing joints like this and stuff and a good thing about it is once you um, you know once you use it you just let the glue harden and then the glue pops right off the silicone and uh, it's, it's really easy to clean there's no problems cleaning it so, you know, pretty much as you can see, I've got that, um, that clamp board that I made for my bench that I use the same clamps from my router on to kind of, you know, glue up small cabinets and whatnot and just hold them square and position them, um, you know, perfectly square for the glue up. And then um, it allows you to, uh, like, have extra hands so you don't have to um, try to hold everything and have it slip around while you're putting more clamps on it. So, you know, basically, I guess you can see I'm just putting some, some glue on all the, uh, the mating surfaces. I'm not going to use any mechanical fasteners on this because, um, you know, it really doesn't require a whole lot of strength. And I think the glue will be fine. So, um, now once there's glue on all the parts. It's real. It's real easy with this um, this board set up to uh, to you know get the like I said to get the assembly real square. And as you can see I put some wax paper down first just to keep things from sticking. Then I just use those wedge clamps on the side there to to pull that together. And then I'm just going to uh, stick a couple of bar clamps on here temporarily. And I'll go around to the back of it, and I'll actually um, put some of those other rubber band clamps on, too, which I'll show you later. There they are. I use them to kind of pull everything square up against those, uh, those square corners there. And then just let the glue dry. And I needed a couple, you know, finger pulls for the drawers, so I, I tried making a couple pieces. I took my table saw, and I, I made this shape um, part on a much bigger piece of wood. And then I just cut it and cut it to length, um, sanded some radiuses on it, and then used some of those clothespin type clamps to, um, you know, to set up a couple of them and try them. And, you know, there's the shape that I use. Just kind of cut it out of a longer piece so it would be safer to cut. And um, I, I just did a couple of them to start out with just to see how it, how it felt and, you know, make sure there was enough room for my fingers to get in there and everything. And, you know, it, it worked out really good. I tapered the front of them so that you could read the labels. It wouldn't be too hard to read them. And um, it was real comfortable and easy to pull on. So I'm happy with the way that they came out. And I just go back and glue the rest of them together now. And then after that's all done, I go back and put two coats of polyurethane on everything. There you can see the, the cabinet. 
So I did a good job putting two coats of polyurethane and also made a little plywood panel to put on the back of the, uh, the cabinet itself, keep everything square. And for that, I just had some, uh, some antique screws laying around. I got boxes of these old screws that um, have slotted heads that are a real pain to use. But they get the job done, and I guess our grandparents used them. They had them before the Phillips head, so... Um, you know, I just decided to try to use some of them up here, putting the uh, back panel on. So I got the back panel all mounted on there now. And, um, you know, everything came out nice and square and fit together good. And I'm real happy with this little cabinet. And I'm glad I cut down the distance between the, um, the grooves here. And uh, everything seems to um, slide together and fit together good now. And then I need a couple little um, rounds to put in the center to keep the blades from sliding around. So I just had an old piece of plexiglass laying in my shop, a little short cut off left, and um, decided to just take the router and cut some rounds out. And then, um, you know, there they are. They're just little, little round pieces that are a little bit smaller than the uh, 5 8 diameter opening in the blade for the arbor. And I took them over after cutting them out and just put them in my lathe chuck to hold them while I um, was able to put a 1032 tap up in the middle of them for a screw to, to locate it, flathead screw to come up from the bottom and locate it. And then the next thing I did is I, I went on my computer and just made up some labels. I used, um, you know, just some sticky back label paper. And after I got them printed out, I just used a coat of polyurethane on them to make them, you know, so that they'll last for a while. And then here we are just, you know, putting that centerpiece in. I used flathead screws from the bottom and just had that tapped in the middle, as you saw. And, you know, they they worked out good. They're just, um, they stick up high enough so that they keep the blades from sliding around. And the space between the drawers is so that the blades can never really come loose anyway. So, um, you know, after that, I decided to try and put one together and took a piece of the, um, the cork that I had machined out, used some spray adhesive on it, and then just went back and kind of carefully tried to center it over the, um, around those finger grooves for pushing the blade up and stuck it in place. And then just took and put the, uh, put a blade on it for a couple minutes just to, to hold it down and, um, make sure that it's got good contact on the whole thing. And as you can see there, it really worked out nice. Um, hold the blade good and, um, you know, it, it makes everything kind of goes together pretty good there. It's still a little bit sticky there. So um, then I went back and uh, I started by uh, putting a coat of wax on everything. Um, I went back and I put some wax in all those little grooves which was kind of a pain it took a while but um you know it helped with the sliding and then i went back and put some wax on each of the blade panels here and last thing i did was i just took and uh, you know stuck my little labels on now I, these are always easy to change in the future but i i just uh you know made some up for the blades that i'm going to start with in the cabinet so pretty much, you know, that's how it works. And, you know, that everything slides nice now and um, works really good. So went back and stuck the rest of these little labels on. And, you know, they're just shipping labels that I used. I printed out on. And like I said, putting a coat of polyurethane on them really helps make them durable and uh, last a little bit longer. So I got all the labels on and um, turned out good with that little angle on there. You can really read them good and then i needed a place to store the dado shim so i took one of my um, cork insert there cork pads and cut the radius out to match the um the shims and made it so that they just kind of drop in under the blade on that one on the thinner dado blade so um you know it's an easy way to store the shims and they'll they'll stay in place and they won't blow all over the place so, you know, there it is, uh, getting closer to the end now, and it's just time to, every everything has two coats of polyurethane on it, so it's just time to go back and, 
you know, start assembling all the drawers. And like I said, there's going to be a couple different um, drawers. There's eight of them that have the smaller pads on for the um, for the uh, dado set parts. And then I have, um, let's see, six more that have the um, the larger pads on for the 10-inch uh, blades. And then at the top of the unit, I had a um, another an old molding head and some stabilizers that I wanted to mount. So um, I'll show you shortly what I did to for that plate. Um, so there you can see there's the um, dado blades, how they fit in there. And this is just, you know, some boring video putting the putting everything together, putting the glue on and then kind of sticking it together. And um, yeah, here it is for the um, for the top tray. I needed something to hold molding head cutters. So I just cut an extrusion like that. And I went back and screwed it on the top, as you can see. And I put a couple more holes in there for um, a couple more of those plastic pieces for the blade stabilizers also. So the top drawer is uh, for, you know, the molding head there. And then the the next eight drawers all hold the blades from the dado set. And then you get down into the um, the bottom drawer. They're just for blades. I still have one more blade to buy. I still have to get a good um, glue line rip blade. But uh, basically, it's the cabinet. You know, really serves the purpose that I built it for. It works really good, I feel, and um, it was really easy to make. It pretty much, you know, just a couple grooves and some side panels and stuff, and um, real easy to see what's in each case and keep everything organized. And you can just pull the pull the uh, the trays out and they're flat on the bottom, so you can take them over and just set them on the saw to protect the blades while you're changing them too. So I think it was really worthwhile making it. And, um, you know, there you can see a little better how that the uh, molding head fits in there. And I, that piece actually blocks off the top and fills it in a little bit. Um, I was going to close them all in, but I wanted to try to keep them open to keep some airflow in there just so I don't get rust because my shop is in my basement. And, um, you know, if you close stuff up too tight, you get moisture trapped. So... Shims are easy to get to, and uh, later I went back and I actually wrote the thickness on each shim, so I would know, you know, I would know what they are when I go to use them. And I think this is, you know, just one of those fun little projects that I thought I would share my idea with you of, you know, what I came up with, and probably a million different ways to uh, to make something like this. So, um, you know, I just thought I'd just share the idea and. Uh, there it is. It fit. I had a little shelf next to my saw, and uh, I took a couple books out of it, and it actually fit on my shelf perfect, so it keeps the blades right there where I can grab them and use them. And um, now I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching, and please subscribe.